Where are you going? going so hey everybody, it's Sky here. Welcome back to my channel. Um, as you'll probably already be able to see in the thumbnail and description, or title I guess, of this video, um, we're going to be doing a little bit of a tutorial today. Um, this was requested by one of you. I do apologize. I really should start writing down who requests stuff so I can give them a shout out, but I totally forgot to. I just went back and tried looking for the comment. I can't even remember whether it was a comment on YouTube or if it was on Facebook or messaged me. My mind is just mushed lately. I do apologize, but um, the person who requested this, you'll know who you are, and we definitely appreciate the request. Hopefully um, a lot of you get some knowledge out of this. Um, so this is how I color in kind of larger block pieces of hair. And again, I'm just going to exaggerate. This is how I color it in. Um, of course, there's no right or wrong way of doing it. Um, I'm just going to show you the way that I do it. So um, we're going to be working in Enchanted Faces, um, and I just wanted to work in this book because the images are super small and it's going to be easy to complete one. Um, I'm not sure if we'll just color the hair and the rest will be speed colored or whatnot, but I'll let you guys decide. We'll color the hair for now and then we'll just kind of wait and see what you guys think, I think. The first thing I am going to do though is I'm going to go over and I'm going to put a marker base down for everything here. Um, I'll probably end up speeding that up. So. Okay, so if anybody is wanting to follow along for the whole picture, um, I only used four different colors. Um, I used the Touch 5 markers as a base for this. Um, the blue was number 67, pastel blue. And then all of the yellow is number 49, pastel green, which is a funny name for a yellow tone like that. Um, her skin was done with number 29, Barely Beige. And then for all the pink parts, I've got number 140, Light Orange. 
And you don't have to have a base, um, especially for this tutorial, you don't need a base for it. Um, the only thing is, is your lightest color, which in my case is going to be the cream, you're just going to use more of that, basically as much as you need to cover the white. Um, I like doing a base just because then I don't have to use as much of my pencil, um, it kind of saves them a little bit, so yeah. Um, without further ado, let's dive in now and just going to zoom in a little bit here. Okay, so I picked out five colors. Um, I want to go with um, kind of like a yellowed strawberry kind of look. Um, you guys can use whatever colors you're going, or whatever kind of colors you want. Um, but I personally have the mulberry, I've got processed red, hot pink, salmon pink, and cream. And I'm going to take my darkest color, which is the mulberry, and we'll start off with this strand here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to color in the very tips and then fade it out a little bit. And I'm going to do this at both ends. And I'm not bringing this out very much at all. Just a little bit. And then I'm just going to put in some flicking motions from the tips coming up. Now, I don't need too many of these. Um, I want her hair to look a little bit lighter, so... This is basically just going to stand out a little bit. And then, actually, I think we're going to skip a few here, so actually I'm just going to grab the hot pink instead, and I'm going to come in, kind of shade a little bit out from that darker pink, and then do the same thing. I'm going to start doing that flicking motion to bring that color in. Don't want a whole lot of it. I want her hair to have a really noticeable yellow tint. Then I'm going to switch to the salmon pink and I'm just going to add some more hair strands with this. Kind of mix it in a little bit with our darker area and then after that I'm just going to grab the cream and I'm not going to do flicking motions but going in the same direction that the hair is going I'm just going to kind of burnish and blend that hair together and this kind of gives um, like a semi realistic look it's kind of in between realistic and cartoony looking hair So we'll do it on this bigger chunk here. Again, same thing, I'm going to pick up the mulberry and I'm going to start putting that in at the ends. Again, we don't need too much of that, just dark coverage at the end and then just fade it out a bit. And I do that just because I find it's a little bit easier to fade the hair into each other even though you're doing those flicking motions. It's just kind of nice to have a starting point. Okay, same thing as last time. So start making those flicking motions. First, I'm going to come out, following the same direction that the hair is going to be going. And from here, I'm going to start curving it a little bit. Again, I don't want too many. Just enough to give this a little bit of texture and just add a little bit of dimension to the blockiness of this hair. We'll do some darker, some lighter. It can look messy and it probably will, not a huge deal. Okay, from there I'm going to switch to the hot pink. Again, I'm going to fade this out a little bit from the dark, the mulberry, and it's just going to help transition our colors. And once I'm done with that, I'll go in and put some more strands in with this. Just doing the exact same thing and just following the way that the hair is going. Switch to the salmon pink, same thing. And 
And then again, going in with the cream in the same direction that the hair is going. for the shaky camera. Miss Lilo is a little crazy right now. What are you doing? Get your butt out of here. Now this is just one of many ways that you can fill in kind of larger blocky hairstyles like this. You are so crazy right now. What is up with you? Huh? <laughs> okay. We're pretty much just going to repeat those steps for everything, like all the hair, of course. Will you lay down? And it is going to look better in the smaller areas just because there's not as much space. It's kind of easier to control your flicking motions. It's not going to look as messy. Let me just add a few extra ones in here. Just to kind of help with that messy look. Switch to our hot pink. Gotta be careful in the smaller areas though, because if you add too much, they're gonna look really dark and you don't quite want that. So I guess in some ways, switch into the salmon pink now. In some ways, the smaller areas could be a little bit harder because you have to be a little bit more careful and there's not as much room to work with. Okay, and then switching to the cream. And for this picture, what I'm going to do, we'll finish the hair and then I'm going to put the rest in time lapse. But if enough of you want me to post the real time version of it, I will. Um, it won't have audio though. I won't be explaining through it. Um, if you just wanted to kind of follow along with the colors that I use, um, we could do that. But again, it's up to you guys. Okay, I'm switching back to the mulberry here, and I'm just going to kind of color in her hair behind here, just because it's going to be a little bit darker. I'm not really too worried about it. I'm not going to completely color it in though. I'll switch to the hot pink and put a touch of that in there as well. And then we'll go over that with the cream, just to kind of still make it the same kind of color. Um, actually, switching back to the mulberry here, we'll put in just a couple little hair strands. Same thing with the hot pink. Salmon pink. And cream. So this is kind of a messy technique. But uh, it's just the way, my favorite way of doing hair like this. Definitely gives the hair some more interest. 
I'm just going to go over this bit with the cream again. Okay. I'm going to do this little bit up here. Apologies for the camera shaking. Glue those out of here. It's going to be fairly dark here too, just because a lot of that is in at the tips, so it's going to be darker, but um, I'm actually just going to skip the hot pink for this. I'm going to put in a touch of salmon pink on each of these and then just go in with the cream because I don't want them too dark. They're at the top of her head, so um, it wouldn't really be in shadow or anything. And I want to make sure that it matches in with the rest of her hair, so we'll kind of keep it like that, I think. Okay, here's where it can get tricky again. So we're going to switch to her hair here. And I'm going to turn my page just because it's easier to do the flicking motions this way. So, oh, make it hot chocolate. I'll be right back. My kettle's boiling. Okay. Um, I can't quite remember what I was saying. But we're just going to repeat the same steps. It's actually very interesting hot chocolate. I didn't realize it, but we're out of milk, and I usually like mixing some milk in with the hot chocolate just to kind of cool it off a little bit, so that way it's actually drinkable. And then it kind of makes it a little bit creamier too. But since we're out of milk, that kind of spotted rain's creamer, he's got, I think it's like double-double or triple-triple style creamer. Um, if you're not from Canada, you probably wouldn't know what that means, but... <laughs> I put some of that in and it's actually really interesting. I'm not 100% sure if I'm digging it though. <laughs> but it's, it's interesting. Okay, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start putting these strokes in lightly until I'm kind of happy with them and then I'll darken them up a little bit. I should say once I'm happy with the way that they're going. I'm going to try to avoid making it completely messy um, in some spots, it's unavoidable because they're just awkward hand motions, and it's just going to be hard to get them perfectly to match up with the hair. But we don't want it to look completely messy, so just a little bit at a time. See, like here, this hair is going like perfectly kind of bowed like that. Put something behind my page here. But then you get up to here where it kind of curves up a little bit. Like it's kind of hard to see which way the hair is going. So sometimes you just kind of got to make it up. Okay, I'm going to move on to the hot pink now. And then salmon pink. So today's been a little bit of a crazy day. I am super emotional today for whatever reason. I don't know what it is. Probably a mixture of everything. I'm just kind of going a little bit stir crazy, and my back's been bugging me. Everything with stitch is just a little overwhelming. I'm switching to the cream now. And then, of course, my anxiety always picks bad times to kind of pop up and get worse. This little wet is under this. But thank goodness Rain is such an understanding partner. Usually it's uh, me comforting him, but today is the other way around. So. He wanted to give me some time to myself to kind of relax and de-stress, so he took little man out sledding, and I figured I needed to record this video, so what is more relaxing than coloring?
Okay. It's going to get a little tricky here now because we've got this big long length of hair and what are we supposed to do with that? So, hmm. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to create a little bit of a shadowed area here. And this might look really funny for now, but I think it should turn out okay. Just kind of bring that out a little bit, fade it out. I'm going to sharpen my pencil. You have to have it a decent tip on it at least to be able to do those hair strands. Start flicking those again, bringing them in, a little bit rounded up top, and then they kind of change. Do some darker, some lighter. Don't want to do too many. Switch to the hot pink, bring that out a little bit, and then fade it out on all of these areas, and then do the same thing. This color is so similar to the Mulberry too, though, that I don't want to put too much in. Kind of a little bit for variation and then we'll switch to the salmon pink which we want more of this one in here because it's quite a bit different and this kind of ties in the yellow a little bit easier because it's more of a yellowed kind of pink so put a good amount of that color in there and then i'm actually going to switch back to the mulberry and we're going to come down here where I'm going to do the same thing that I did here. I'm going to build a little bit of a shadow here. I'm going to fade it out on either side. And then same thing, I'm going to come in and start putting in some pencil strokes here. Maybe darken up a little bit underneath this clip. Kind of do these little sections at the same time as well. I'm going to do the same thing on this strand of hair too. I'm going to create kind of a shadowed bit right there. Okay, and then here I'm going to go fairly dark and kind of try to create a little bit of texture in over this darker area so that way it doesn't look just like solid color. I want it to have some kind of hair marks as well just so it kind of matches in there. If you can see what I mean it doesn't look so flat now. So it's darker and it kind of separates the highlights, um, it adds some more interest, but it still looks like it belongs. It's not just one big block of color. Okay, once I've got that done, I'm going to pick up my cream and I'm going to go in over top of the bits I did here. I'm just to about halfway into this darker highlight here. I'm not going to touch that quite yet. Just because I need to finish the colors in here. I 
am going over a lot of these black lines in her hair too to kind of soften them up. They are a little bit too harsh for the hair that I'm going for because I kind of want like a frosted kind of pink look to her hair. So going over those black lines help with that. I do apologize for the image having to be upside down. It's just a little bit easier for my wrists. Okay, so we can work on this section at the same time here. So I'm going back in with the mulberry. I'm going to darken up the tips and then fade out from them and then we'll go in and add some little hair strands. This one, again, this is a really odd shape, so this is going to be a little bit of a tricky one. So, in at the right here, I'm going to follow the shape that it's got here, and I'm going to start off lightly, because I'm not 100% sure how this is going to look. And then as I get to about midway, I'm going to start kind of bringing the strokes up, and then more up and curved as we get to the top of this line. So that's why you kind of want to work lightly at first. And then once you're happy with how the hair strokes are looking, then you can come in and kind of darken them a little bit. Again, I don't want too much of this color. Add a few hair strokes in here as well. in this piece. And I just want to say, even though I use the same marker for a lot of this, um, of course these colors aren't all going to be the same. Like the wings are going to be different than the hearts. The one thing I love about doing any kind of base is you can usually make them lighter. Um, you can't go completely back to white with this, but if I went over this with white, it would make kind of like a really light salmon pink color. So you can always make the marker a little bit lighter or you can make it super dark. Um, I absolutely love being able to um, kind of differentiate one marker and make it look like a whole bunch of different colors. It's super neat how we can do that. Next, coming in with the hot pink. Same thing, just going to keep following the hair direction and just putting in some of this color. Again, not too much though. And with the salmon pink, same thing but a little bit more. I'm not being very neat or careful anymore either. Um, I only am really careful with the darkest color because that's the one that's going to stand out the most and then the more carefree and the more you just kind of let your hand do its own thing, the more realistic or semi-realistic in this case the hair is going to look. Um, and then I'm going to switch to the mulberry again and we're going to go through these darker areas add a little bit more texture to them. And then we'll go in with the cream and block everything in.
Okay, I should be able to flip her around now. So, this isn't super, um, super tricky to do. It's fairly easy, actually. The hardest part is probably trying to figure out the hair strokes and putting them in. Um, it can be a little bit daunting, especially if it's your first time doing it this way. Um, I have to say, I don't usually... Sorry, Lilo. I don't usually do this method quite a lot, so I would say that I'm still like a beginner at it, and this is what I get with doing it, so I think anybody could do it this way. I'm just going to come in with my cream and just continue lighting, lightening up these black spaces. I will finish her hair. And then, like I said, the rest of this is going to be in time-lapse, whether it's attached to the end of this video or in a separate one, I'm not 100% sure yet. Um, probably be in a separate one. But, um, again, if you guys do want the real-time version of this, feel free to let me know. Um, again, it's not going to have me explaining everything I'm doing like it does now. Um, it would just be showing what I'm doing. But let me know, and just so you do know, um, it's going to be mostly Prismacolors for everywhere that I have a marker base, but the clouds I'm going to be using the Neo Color 2s for. So, just want to give you a heads up on that. That might impact your decision if you don't have the Neo Color 2s or watercolors or anything like that. You might not want to follow along with this. So, yeah. Switching back to the mulberry. This is kind of a really long, windy piece of hair, so just at every bend, I'm going to create a shadowed area. And then, kind of the same thing as on the other side, for the most part, I'm just going to color this in. Be mindful that this part is her wing, not her hair. I'm just going to color these bits in first. I'm going to put a little touch of the hot pink in here. And then some of the salmon pink. And then I'll go over with the cream. Not being really neat at all, I'm just kind of throwing those colors in there. I'm not too concerned. Okay, and then I'm going to switch back to my mulberry. And we'll just continue to do the exact same thing that we have been. We'll get all these little strands of hair out of the way first though, and then we'll tackle this kind of bigger one here. a little bit of hot pink in these strands, not too much though, there's not much room to work with these ones. And then we'll do a fair amount of the salmon pink. Hopefully I'm explaining this well enough. I was a little bit worried about doing it today just because, like I said, my anxiety and just stress levels are getting the better of me and sometimes it's a little bit hard to 
formulate my words and concentrate on what I'm doing. So, you know, if you guys found this too confusing or I didn't, you know, explain anything well enough, feel free to request another video. Um, I'd be more than happy to if this one isn't adequate enough for what you guys need. Hopefully it is though. Just a big ball of self doubt today. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and sharpen my cream. It's quite dull now. On to the mulberry. I am going to add a little bit of a shadow in behind her wing here. Of course, she's got her shadow here. And then I'm also going to put a little bit of a shadow in at the ends here. I probably don't need to, but I'm going to just to give the page a little bit more interest. I am going to have to turn her sideways here. Okay, and I'm going to start my flicking motion in starting at this strand here. I don't really want to go over top of this strand. So, I'm just going to kind of make it look like the hair is going right through it behind it. It's a little bit tricky, but just slowly add in those strands. And they don't always have to be coming in from either side. We could do some in the middle too, which I think we're going to do just to kind of help the direction of this hair. Not there. I'm going to come in with the hot pink now. Not too much of this. I already put in probably way too much of the mulberry. But I do know that it's still going to work out because this hair is still kind of tucked back. So it doesn't need to have as much highlight as the hair on the top does. Coming in with the salmon pink. Put quite a bit of that in here. And then, of course, we'll finish it off with the cream. the sounds. I have my litter boxes, not my, my cat's litter boxes in the art room, so one of them is occupied right now, and they are not quiet about it. Okay. So that is her hair done. <laughs> wow. 
without looking, I can tell you which cat is in the cat box, and that would be Stitch. <laughs> he always has to clean his paws off on the litter box before he hops out. He's very prissy like that. So hopefully this helped, and again, if for whatever reason it didn't, um, I am more than willing to do another tutorial, maybe on a better day when I'm a little bit more into it. Um, I don't know, I'm just, I'm doubting myself quite a bit today. Um, maybe I shouldn't be, I don't know, I'm going to leave that up to you guys. Um, again, I'm not 100% sure if it's going to be just this, or if the time lapse to the rest of the colouring is going to be at the end or in another video. I guess you guys will know because the video that you're watching will either be almost over or there'll be more to it. <laughs> um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope to see you next time. Okay, bye! Are you going, going so fast tonight? Have you ever stopped beside the road to smell the odors of life? Take a breath now, don't hold it in too long. Cause you might end up missing out on life's short little song. She's saying. Watching seasons change our road.
Where are you going?